Hey guys, this is Eskimo Poodle, and we are back with Let's Play Okami HD on the PlayStation Network. The last time, we started on the Agata Forest after learning the lily pad technique from blooming Sakio's tree fully with Mr. Orange's cherry blossom dance. And now we're going to finish exploring more of Agata Forest. Um, yeah, I know I'm probably pronouncing the name of the forest right. I don't care. I if I can't pronounce it right, that's too bad for me. But some people care, some people don't. I don't. As long as I can spell it, I'm good to go. Um, anyways, in between last episode and this episode, I did a few things. The primary two being, I went down and cut down the uh, the peach blossom off the peach tree in Kamiki Village that you get for blooming the tree in Agata Forest. And for that, we got a piece of crystal, which sells for, I think, 2,500 or 5,000 gold. I'm not sure which one, but it sells for a pretty pretty decent amount. And then the other thing that I did was I went to the dojo, and I got the Rosary Technique Spirit Storm, which basically adds two more hits, or one more hit, or however many more hits to your, to your Rosary attack. So now you have a nice, long attack now. So, six hits. So, it's pretty nice, pretty good. And most of the hits count as, like... Well, each each string of attacks, you press the square button, that counts as, like... Like... Seven or eight hits, actually. So, it ends up being, like, a... A 45-hit combo or something like that. Or 50-hit or something like that, if you get all the hits. So... That costs 7,000 yen, so if you want to go pick that up, it's pretty good if you're going to be using the Rosary as a main attack weapon, which... I'm probably going to be doing because I like the attack speed. I mean, I'll switch it up between the various weapon types eventually, but for right now, I'm just going to use the Rosaries because they're fast, and because they hit so much, they got enough power for me. And that's pretty much all I did in between the in the, ep in between the episodes. Um, yeah, so now we can get started on exploring the rest of Agatha Forest. Starting off, we head this way from the entrance. And look, it's our old friend, the sleepy bear. He's back, and he's still sleeping like a bastard. How you doing, buddy? I do believe it is. Seems like a fitting name. Newly dubbed Sleepy. He's not one of the seven dwarves, not even one of the seven bears. He's just sleepy. Yeah, he'd probably be great in a circus. What do you mean animal abuse? Yeah, if you try to like do anything to him, then you could call it an animal abuser. Well, if you headbutt him, you could call it an animal abuser. He doesn't seem to—he doesn't seem to care if he slashes fat belly all day. He just gets mildly surprised and then goes right back to sleep. Okay, anyways, he's uh, Isid mentions that he seems to like spears. Uh, there are three spear objects in this forest that we can bring back to Sleepy to get more praise from him. Uh, let's see, let's get you out of the way, because I don't want to... And here's the first one. These don't appear until you actually, like, talk to Sleepy. I don't know if you have to do them in a certain order, but we might as well. This is the first one. It's like a little cabbage thing. And yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta do the same thing you did in... in, um... crap. In... in the runes, or whatever, uh... I already forgot what that place is called. Uh, Hana Valley. And you just gotta push it forward. And you just gotta hope that you don't push it off the edge like that. But luckily I think if you just exit the area, it'll go back to the base of the area. So it'll just take a second to reset it. And then you gotta do two more. One of which is mildly irritating because it's kind of egg-shaped a little bit. So... A lot of people are irritated by that. And for doing it, you get a decent amount of praise. Nothing great. I think you get I think you get a grand total of like 25 praise or some, something like that. So I'd say it's worth it. And the best part about this is once you deliver all three items, Sleepy Bear is no longer asleep. He s starts dancing on his, little, uh, on his little spear, and he just dances there the rest of the game. So he goes from being super sleepy to super dancey. Alright, come on. If you want to try to, like, get it up against the wall and... 
do it like that. I guess that's one way to do it. Problem is, don't want it to fall off the edge. There's a time you can do this later on in the game that'll make it a little easier because you get an ability that'll help it out a little bit, but might as well just do it now. Yeah, hang on. Sorry, I had to scratch my nose. Yeah, headbutting works pretty well too. As long as you don't headbutt it off the side, you should be good to go. Don't you dare. Wolfie, don't you dare. Don't you dare. No, oh, you son of a bitch. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, these things can be kind of a pain in the ass to get up there, but... Oh, well, you gotta do what you gotta do in order to... level up your abilities, I guess. I'm probably gonna go buy that, uh... that, de that uh... Demon Bell, or whatever it's called, that makes it so that the, uh... or Holy Bell, I think, that makes it so that the Demon Scrolls have a harder time or they don't have a harder time, but they just uh, kind of like run away from you when you have it equipped. And that, that'll make it easier for that one little guy right there to not irritate you. Oh, now it goes up all nice and easy. Third time's the charm, huh? Come here. Once you get it up to sleepy, he sees his new toy, and he's like, ooh, new bedtime, yay. And the other one just magically disappears. Oh, I guess you get a... Oh, I think it might be 40 praise total, not 25, my bad. Anyways, uh, we got two more items we can get. I'm going to see if I can get the third item first instead of the second one, just to see if the game will let you do it. I'm not sure if it will. They might not. It might not even appear until the until the uh, third the third part. Let's see. Um, I'm not seeing it. It's up in the treetops. The one, the third one is. Um, let's see. Where is that second one, anyways? I know it's around here somewhere. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna let you do the third one until actually, you know, third. The bastards. Uh, come on, where you at? Yeah, we gotta go find that second one, I guess. Only problem is I may or may not have forgot where it is. I just had it too earlier because I was running through this area before I started recording just to make sure I didn't forget too much stuff like I usually do. And naturally, my pea-sized brain managed to forget. Okay, where is this thing? Uh, let's see, let's see. Well, there's a demon gate for us to take out, but we can do that as soon as we help Sleepy, because Sleepy's more important. Okay, where are you? I know you're supposed to be around here somewhere. Um, okay, Melon. By the way, since it's nighttime, there is a hidden treasure around here. Let's see, I think it's by these stairs. Yep. Dragonfly bead. More selling crap. Okay, where did that stupid... Second... Ah, you son of a bitch. Uh, anyways, I might as well show you what the secondary use for the beads are. If you use them in the secondary slot... They have a little, like, ranged effect, a little shotgun effect. Only problem is, they can only be used uh, a certain number of times before they have to recharge real quick. It's nothing uh, too debilitating. Uh, later ones uh, don't have that recharge period, so they're pretty nice, actually. But the ones we have right now, unfortunately, they do have a recharge time. But it doesn't make them any less useful, that's for sure. They're still plenty useful. There we go. Got more Demon Phoenix. Very nice. 
Yeah, see, I, I like the rosary, or, uh, I like the rosary and I like the reflectors, but the reflectors are just too slow for my taste. I mean, once you get to the more powerful ones later in the game, then I can deal with it being a little bit slower, but I don't know, I just, I just always like those faster attacks. I'm either about super slow and super powerful, or super fast and kinda not that powerful. I've never, I've never really been a middle of the road type of guy. Why? I don't know. It's just the way I do things. Okay, where is that stupid third item? Or second item? Um, well, since we're over here anyways... I might as well get that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've gotten plenty of fangs for you, buddy. Might as well get that, uh... Peace Bell. That'll make it so the enemies aren't constantly running towards you. Like, uh, let's see, where's where's an enemy? Um, well, one, where's an enemy? And two, where's that stupid ball? But yeah, see, now they won't run away from you or anything, but they also won't come chasing after you when you go running past them to try to accomplish something. So it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, you know what? Uh, where is that stupid item that I need? I know it's supposed to be around here somewhere. And I know you can do it. I just don't remember where it is. Uh, let's see. There's the bottom of the hill. I could have swore it was around here. Actually, you know what? I think it might be up that other hill, actually. Yeah, it might actually be up in here. Oh, by the way, um, at this shop right here, you can buy two more gold dust for 5,000 yen each. So go ahead and buy those, and you can upgrade your reflector now. Um, go ahead and buy a few more herbs, because I forgot there's a lot of herbivores in this uh, particular area. So go ahead and buy a few of those. And then if you need them, uh, you can have the Infinity Stone that gives you infinite ink temporarily. Uh, Vengeance Slips, which makes you temporarily invincible. Uh, Exorcism Slip S, which does a small amount of damage. And then we got the upgraded version, the Exor Exorcism Slip M, which does a pretty good amount of damage. And then we also have the Steel Fist and the Soul Fist Sake, or Steel Soul Sake. And then we also have Holy Bone M's for sale for 1500 yen. But I got two right now because I did the trading at the dojo. So, and you're, honestly, I only have 5 HP, or 4 HP anyway, so it's not like I really need it just yet. But yeah, make sure you grab those, those, uh, gold dust. That way if you upgraded the reflector the first thing, then now you can upgrade your rosaries. Um, see, there's another item we can't get. Now, you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to look up where that stupid ball is because I don't remember where it went. So give me one second, guys. Sorry about this. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where are you? Uh, let's see. trying to find this damn thing, but I can't find my notes. I know I should have looked at this earlier, but I thought I did. But, you know, the whole part where I can't ever remember anything that I try to remember. You know, it's just the way I do things. Uh, okay, here we go. There's that. Let's see. Where are you? Uh, okay, that's why. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, actually, I guess I... Come on down here. Come on down by where the... 
Mr. Merchant guy is over here. And we, I, I forgot that we had to actually clear this demon gate before the second item appeared. So let's take care of these chumps real quick. Oh, by the way, um, the other way to build up your Tribal Wars Charm, I might have mentioned it, is by doing combos. Notice how it went from green to yellow right there. Uh, the Rosaries uh, build up the combos faster than the... Yeah, there's that exploding attack that I always told you to avoid. But yeah, the Rosaries build up the combo faster than, faster than the... Uh, than the uh, Reflectors. So, that's another good reason to use the Rosaries, is because it'll build up your invincibility nice and quickly. And I guess I killed you too soon. Come on, hurry up. Come out of the ground so I can kill you. There we go. Pretty easy. The one thing you do gotta watch out for the Rosaries for though is because they attack so fast, you might accidentally get that extra hit in before you have a chance to swipe them for their DB thing, so just be careful about that. Alright, 15 preys and some monkeys, and there's the walnut that we have to give to Mr. Mr. Sleepy. Might as well use these fish since we're not gonna be using them on anything else anytime soon. Now let's see, here's our... Let me see, let me see. Uh, yeah, the other, the third item is going to be over on one of these trees right here, but yeah, you can't, I guess you can't get it till after you deliver the second item to Mr. Sleepy Bear. Which kind of sucks. And you know what, this is actually going to take me a few minutes to get up there, so I'm just going to deliver it to you guys, and then I'll show you guys when I deliver it, okay? Because other, otherwise it would just take a take up valuable recording time when we can do other stuff and I've wasted enough time on this part so I'll just meet you guys there real quick alrighty we made it back and we got the walnut near Mr. Sleepy so as long as he'll take the offering don't you dare go off the edge I will hurt you oh now he's extra happy for another new toy And to get another 10 praise. And we got a pretty decent chunk. I don't think we have enough for our next upgrade yet, do we? Oh, we do. We have enough for another bottle of ink. So we might as well grab that. Yeah, there's, no, there's not really any point to grabbing the help just yet because you're going to need the ink more for your special abilities and your brush powers and stuff like that. And health is... Honestly, you got the you got the little in, you got the little barrier thing going on with the uh, with the uh, godhood levels and health items are pretty easy to come by, so you don't really got to worry about it too much. And I forgot about this bud right here. What do we got? What do we got? Infinity stone, very nice. So if you don't want to spend the cash on it, oh well. All right, and here's the final item, one of the more difficult items. This is the beehive. For one, it's a pain because it starts out in the water, and for two, that little stem gets in the way a little bit. Alright, let's see if I can. There we go. Nope, get out of the water. How about you get out of the water there, pal? You know what? Let's make a big ol' That supposed to make it easier on me. Get out of the water. Okay, that didn't work. Fantastic, come on. There we go. Alright, yeah. That little stem makes it a little bit difficult. See, it'll it'll do a little jump every once in a while, so... Just be careful about that thing. But once again, I'm just going to meet you guys up there because otherwise this whole video would be nothing but me pushing balls up to Sleepy. You little bastard. Alright, yeah, I'll meet you guys up there in just a minute, guys. Okay, I finally got this stupid beehive up here, and I accidentally delivered it before I got the camera back on. But, uh, yeah, uh, for some reason the beehive is a lot more prone to falling downhill 
then or rolling back downhill while you're pushing it up so you got to be really careful with this it's a real pain in the ass it took me about 10 minutes to get it up here but once you finally do get it up here mr sleepy becomes mr happy and he forks over 20 praise for your efforts so not a bad not a bad day's work 40 praise for making a bear happy and now you can sit here and enjoy his little jig all day So there he is, he's all dancing and happy and you still get accused of animal abuse if you try to attack him, so leave him alone I guess. If you have to. I mean, I kinda like the whole terrorizing the bear because he's gives me a measly amount of praise for maximum amount of work, but whatever. Anyways, we still got a few more areas in Agata Forest to explore. A couple of which will yield mildly decent results. Nothing too fantastic. But, this stuff. I never did sell my treasures, did I? Yeah, I don't think I did. And still nowhere near enough for that Golden Fury attack. Oh well, we'll get it eventually. But anyways, if you go up this uh, this ramp right here, which is not the ramp towards the to the entrance. It's a little bit past it, just uh, right next to the... Oh, right, yeah, right next to the merchant right there. Uh, we come up to this little area right here. Which is a little lake area. Hitoshio Spring. Uh, we can't do a whole lot right here, right now. But there's still a few things we can do. Um, I'm not sure what he meant by saying it's pretentious. Maybe Hitoshio Spring has like some folklore meaning. meaning? I'm not really sure. Um, let's see, there's stuff over here we can't do yet because we can't get rid of these piles of leaves. But if we go over here, this is a slight shortcut to Shinshu Field if you ever feel the urge to go back to Shinshu Field and don't want to cross that little lake. Unfortunately, I do believe it is a one-way shortcut, so yeah, it kind of sucks. Unless my mind is failing me and it's two-way. Nope, it's the one-way. But yeah, it leads up over here, you got a nice little view. And there's stuff we can't get here yet, so we'll come back eventually, though. Yeah, so not a whole lot we can do over here, but just remember for later. Because uh, those those clovers that are buried underneath the hard rock right, like that, those usually give out 20 to 30 or sometimes even 50 praise. So they give out a good amount of experience. So they're very useful. And there's a few more things we can do over here. There's a couple of animals to feed, naturally. There's a lot of deer in this forest, actually, so that's why you want to get plenty of plenty of herbs. Because I forgot, I forgot that there's a pretty fair amount of these guys hanging out in this forest. If we go back here, there's a whole lot of nothing, I think. Yeah, but if we go over to this side, there's a clover that we can't do jack shit about. And I could have swore we could get up here, but let me see. Um, no, we can't get up here yet, my bad. I was thinking it was someplace different. Where am I? Actually, no, we can. We can do something over here. Draw a little lily pad right here. And then we can just make it through this little area right here. To a little secret passage. And in this secret passage, just make sure to... Filling the vegetation and nice and bloomy. That way, the power of nature prevails and all that other good junk. I could have swore that was supposed to give me praise, but I guess not. Oh well. But we get another incense burner. Wait, is that our first one, or... I don't remember if we already got one of those. Oh, I guess that's our first one. And those deer were our first deer... Our first deer as well, I think. Alright, there's still plenty more to do in the forest before we actually get to the main part of the forest. As a matter of fact, this video is probably just going to be finishing up the outside of the forest, and then we'll go into the main area. Let's see, um, I know there's another demon gate in here somewhere that we can take care of. 
we talk to this guy right here... Karude. How come no one can see my stupid, like, celestial markings? People need to have more faith. Your son, huh? That's probably not all that good for getting to town. He has a dog called Ume. Hey, didn't that kid in the... What's his... Kamiki Village also have a dog that he was kind of inseparable from? That's not good. Young men should have senses of ventures and go off and try to, like, rescue imaginary princesses and all that good stuff. Unless they're Link from Legend of Zelda, then they can rescue princesses and then they can erase their minds and not remember any of it. But that's a story for another day. Wait, you're asking your son, who probably can't be more than, like, 10 or 12 years old, I'm assuming, to build a new bridge? Why don't you do it, Mr. Bear Hat Guy? Are you too busy to do it yourself? I guess. Yeah. Oh well. This guy's not worth my time at the moment. How much does that incense burner sell for? I think that sells for like 3,000. No, oh, close enough. 2,000, 3,000. Same difference. Go away. No, go away. Go away. Leave me alone. There's no point going in here because that just takes you to, um, well, Nightingales, or Sparrows, my bad. But that just takes you to the bridge that you can't do anything with right now. So there's no point going there yet. We'll be able to do something with that later. But, not anytime soon. We gotta finish up the, uh, dungeon area to get our new ability slash item slash whatever you want to call it. There you go, Bambi. Have fun. Now I gotta go find the rest of you, because there's like three more groups of you guys hanging out in this damn forest. Which makes sense, because deer are kind of, you know, forest-dwelling creatures, so... I guess it makes sense that there's a bunch of you bastards running around in here. And at least we're getting a decent amount of praise from these guys. Stupid Sparrow's only giving you a few praise. Well, hey, Susano, how you doing there, buddy? Yo, buddy. Who you calling Fido Yogi, you bastard? Buddy. Because I'm a dog and you smell, so I have to follow you and hope you use deodorant someday. You're busy taking a nap. Crimson something or other. Well, I'm glad you actually know what it's called, so good for you. Well, that's actually not all that many followers, since most cults have thousands of members usually. Does your ultimate secret technique involve cutting up with a blanket and a, a book and falling asleep, pal? Ew, slacker. He's not going to tell us anything else, so just ignore the, just ignore the slacker for now. Let's go in here. Give us more praise, cause they know we need to level up. Ah, I killed you before I had a chance to get my demon. Thing. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that's the only that's the only real bad thing about the rosaries is you might not you might kill them just a bit too fast. We hurry up. Son of a bitch. Ah, well. At least we got our godhood level up to max and we got perfect score. Once, um, once you get up to like the higher 
some of the monsters that give out higher amounts of gold. Like, some of the regular monsters will give out 20 or 30,000 uh, yen, and then they'll give out another 20,000 when you get that perfect score, so they'll fork over 40,000 yen just for just for beating them, so... You'll make a ton of money later. You may seem like you're kind of short on cash now, but later on in the game, you're not going to be wanting for cash, like, at all. So, don't even worry about that. See, we got a treasure chest over here and more deer. And it looks like this is the dungeon of the area. But, unfortunately, I don't think we can get in just yet. Yeah, we gotta find, like, some kind of key or something like that. So, I guess we should go look around for it. Enhancing weapons. It just... Tells you about gold dust, so nothing too particularly useful, nothing that I haven't told you already, so just ignore it. And another set of deer. See, this is why you want all these herbs, because these guys are everywhere in this forest. On the plus side, I don't think they appear too much more throughout the game. So, most of the deer in the game are in this little area. Another little patch of cursed grass to take care of. And we're almost finished with this outside area. Ooh, and two treasure chests. Very nice. Come here, bunny. When I was younger, I had a stuffed little bunny rabbit. We called him Butterscotch. Because he had, a uh, he had, like, tan-colored, uh, fur. Why? I don't know. I got it for Easter, I think. I actually had my, I actually had some of my stuffed animals. For a long time, like, I think I got that guy when I was like seven and I had him till I was like 15. Like, he was just kind of like decoration for the bed, but I don't know. I never like slept with any of my stuffed animals, I just kind of used them to make my bed look better, I guess. Like, I'd make my bed and I had a bunch of stuffed animals, so I would just put them on like near the pillow and make it all like, make it all. What's that word when you uh, arrange something to make it look good? Um, now these are nightingales right here. They're not sparrows, by the way. Uh, if they ever come back down. Um, come here. There we go. I forget what that word is. When you make it just look all good and, and not like crap like a like my bed does nowadays. I get up and I don't. I think the last time I actually made my bed was several years ago. There's no point, really. I mean. Just gonna sleep in it in a few hours anyways, right? Alright, if you go in here, this is where uh, that that guy lives. I don't think there's really anything in here, though, so... Yeah, not a whole lot in here, so... Except for the roasted meat, which fills your astral pouch. And roasted fish. But, since we already have a full astral pouch, there's not really a whole lot of need for it. Let me see, we're almost finished exploring. Uh, that's the kid we gotta go talk to eventually, but we can ignore him for the time being. Um, because... Actually, I don't think we need to ignore him for too much longer since... We're pretty much done exploring the area, I think. Wait for night to fall to make sure I didn't miss any hidden treasures, which I may or may not have, like I usually do. But, I think I got most of it. And then we'll go talk to him in just a minute, and that should do it for the episode, if nighttime will ever bother to fall. Come on, nighttime, hurry up. I ain't got all day here. Why has he got the rain clouds over his head? Is he sad for some reason? I don't know. Hurry up, nighttime. Take your time. By the way, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but okay, when. Well, now you do it. But I was gonna say, when you start running, you have like little flowers running around behind you. And. But when you're in the water, 
you get little lily pads that run around behind you. You even get those before you have the lily pad power. I, I just think it's a, a neat little a neat little thing. And later on there's going to be a snowy areas and you're going to have like little snowflakes running up behind you. And every once in a while if you draw a lily pad on the water, a frog might appear and then he'll then he'll jump away. Let's see if I can't get one to appear here. No. Come on, froggy. No. Oh well, we tried. I'll try again later and we'll eventually get one of the little bastards to show up. It did oh, and look, there's a cracked wall that I totally didn't remember somehow. Oh look, what do you know, another hidden item that I would have totally missed. And a straight bead. Um, again, I don't remember what number it is, but I will put it in the video description. So don't you worry about that. Alright, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We got a statue with the with the kitty cat. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, we can't do anything with this cat statue yet. Um we're not going to be able to do anything with this cat statue for a while. There are several of these throughout the land, but we can't do anything with them. Like, pretty much towards near the end of the game, actually. But once we are able to do stuff with them, it's pretty useful. It, it use, it'll usually lead to a hidden area that has a stray bead or something like that. So, Okay, let's see. I don't think I missed any other treasure chests, though. I think I got most of them. I got I got the one by the stair the stairs. So let's see, we got all the got all the demon gate thingies. We run. Um, yeah, I think we got most of the animals. We got all the demon gates. We got all the most of the hidden treasures. If if I missed any, then we'll find them eventually later. I don't think there's any hidden on the islands over here. And if there are, then I don't know about them. Or if there are, I know about them and forgot about them. But, yeah, it seems like we got most of them. So anyways, let's go talk to this little kid right here. Who is, as you can as you can probably guess, the son of that uh, fisherman dude over here. Or built bid, bridge builder or whatever the heck he is. What do you mean, where did your little dog go? Don't tell me his name's Toto. Oh wait, no. His name's Ume, right? Oh, you actually have to be daytime for this? Oh, well. I'm gonna try to draw a few more lily pads see if I can get that frog to appear. He doesn't appear for very long. He just kind of appears and then and then croaks out. But No point in not showing it off, I guess. Hurry up, Froggy. I don't know why some of them come with a little flower. Come on, Frog. Okay, no frog, screw it. Okay, kiddo, what do you gotta say, buddy? Kokari. Like Kokari Forest from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time? Maybe? No? Possibly? Actually, no, I got my little uh, flea ball friend here. That's quite the uh, little rabbit hat you got there. I'm assuming he's dead, so how you get his ears to stand up like that? Okay, why are you gonna have a fishing pole and not have a fishing line attached to said fishing pole? Come on, you damn frog bastard. There we go, you hear him? Uh, I'm not sure if you saw him, but he jumped off that far left one. I know he croaked at least. Anyways, now that I got that done. Okay, exploring secret places, good stuff, good stuff. The Suta Runes. Didn't, um, didn't, uh, Susano say there was, uh, the Crimson Helm dude in there, or was, was he talking about something else? 
That probably scared you right out, didn't it? Wait, so you chicken it out of there so fast you locked your dog in there with the with the monster that's probably gonna eat him for sack time? You're a sad, sad little rabbit wearing kid. But I guess if you're scared then Eh. What can I say? I'm not the bravest guy in the world, so I'd probably go running out too. Great, so you're not only chicken, but you're clumsy too, huh? Okay, so it looks like we gotta help this guy out somehow, right? Yeah, yeah, after talking to him a third time like that. Then we finally get a tell him to shut up and man up by giving a headbutt and Okay, seriously, how'd I fall in the water from that? Well, I've never actually tried fishing for chicks, but I guess if you have the right line, like a the right bait, like a nice pickup line, then maybe I guess you could work. But anyways, this starts the uh, the start of the fishing mini game right here. Humongous fish swallowed the moon. Yeah, I'm gonna take a while. Oh, the moon reflected. Okay, I was about to say that's kind of a that's kind of a high jump to swallow the moon. Oh wow, that's uh, kind of creepy actually. How big is that fish gotta be? Okay, yeah, so um, the fishing mini game right here, it's uh, what you do is you're going to see these little shadows that look like those little black things. They're going to be f uh, floating around in the lake, and you just draw a line from the tip of his the tip of his fishing pole to the shadow, and that'll draw the fishing line towards the fish. And then what you got to do is, let's say the fish is running, uh, moving towards the right of the screen, you got to hold your left analog stick towards the left, and that'll slowly wear the fish down. Um, that little bar right there that's going to appear in the lower left corner of the screen, that's going to be your, like, stamina gauge, kind of, your power gauge, as they call it. And if you're if you're in the blue, that means you're not going to, uh, that, that means you're probably not pulling hard enough. The green means you're pulling just the right amount of pressure on the analog stick. You're not putting too much, you're not putting too little, and that'll, that'll tire the fish out. If you're in the red, uh, if you're in the red right there, then... That means your health is going to start going down, and once your health goes down, then you kind of fall in the pool, and you got to start the fishing mini game all over again. So just be careful of that little god right there. And yeah, once you actually, once the little prompt on the screen appears, you press the triangle button, you power slash them, and then depending on the size of the fish, you'll either catch it or you'll have to repeat the uh, you'll have to repeat the process of getting them back out of the water so you can slash them again. Uh, most of the fish right now are only going to take one slash. Later on in the game, they're going to start taking two slashes uh, for the medium-sized fish, and larger-sized fishes are going to take up to three slashes. So, I think I think one of this, I think the storyline fish here might take two or three slashes, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, we got this we got this guy cooked. So now what we got to do? We just got to listen to Issen tell us all sorts of crap we already know. And then just hold the analog stick in the opposite direction of whatever it's going. The smaller fish, they're not going to give you as much trouble because you have a high, you, uh, your stamina gauge is, uh, your life gauge or whatever you want to call it. It's a lot easier to keep it out of the red. And yeah, if you see it going all the way towards the red right there, then what you want to do is you want to, um, back up off the analog stick for just a second so your, so your life gauge goes down a little bit and then, um, 
and then put the pressure back on, so kind of like play a stop and go until it. until you're not in the red, basically. And some of the shadows are deceiving. You might think you got a medium size, a medium sized fish, and you get it out, and it turns out to be a small fish. But yeah, some of them are just a little pain in the butt. But yeah, see how if you're, see how if you're in the red, your health starts going down. If it, if it goes down all the way, then yeah, the game's over, and you gotta try again. And as you as you're fishing, um, not in this particular instance right here, but as you're uh, later on, as you're fishing, here's the main fish we gotta catch. This is a this is this is scripted right here. The third one is always gonna be this one right here for this event. But the more not flowers, you idiot. But the more fish you catch, the bigger fish are gonna are gonna appear eventually. And wow, that was like super easy. He's not supposed to be that easy, is he? Wow, I didn't realize that guy was supposed to be that easy. Anyways, we got the giant salmon. Oh, by the way, all the fish that you catch, you can sell for money. So, that's another benefit of the fishing game, is you can get a good amount of money for it. And if you sell them at certain... If you sell them at certain merchants, they'll give you extra money for it instead of just giving you the standard price. I'll tell you which merchants sell, you, sell them for higher price when we, when we get to them. But don't sell any of the fish you catch right now to the merchants here in the forest, because they'll just give you standard prices. There's a merchant coming up that'll give you a higher price for it later, so we'll sell it there. Hey look, we can get into the runes now. Fantastic. Kid, you're like two feet tall. How are you going to do anything? What are you going to do? Tick them with your bunny ears? Yeah, he'd probably just chicken out at the last minute anyway, so probably a better idea for us to do it. Alright, uh, this guy is going to try to like uh, tackle you to get the key back, so yeah, just kind of run away from him. and You don't got to run all, all that fast because he's not the fastest guy in the world. Um, so yeah, let's just go back to the runes now, and then we can start that area. I'm gonna open up I'm gonna open up the runes and there's a save point right in there and then we'll do the runes next episode, okay? So just bring it up here, we put it in nice and nice and easy like. And then suddenly we can explore the runes. Runes, ruins, however you want to pronounce them. So we're gonna find a lot of like treasure to make treasure to make us rich. We're either gonna find a lot of like fabulous old treasure or like a, a lot of fabulous like treasure that we found since the beginning of the game. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it's gonna be the second one. And here we are in Suta Runes. And what is that little pink thing up there? This looks like it's a helicopter flower thingy that's upside down. I am not sure. The water's looking kind of sickly, though. Yeah, let's try to see if we can get across with our lay pad technique. Or not. That didn't work out too well. Yeah, I guess we're not going to be able to do a whole lot in here. And that is kind of a weird looking statue, isn't it? But anyways... Uh, that's going to be enough for this episode, guys. So next time, we will actually explore the runes and get done with it. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.